Today, we look at one of the on-track events for the Surgeon, or as I like to call it, the Object 268, and this is an amazing tier 10 tank destroyer. It's one that always gets left kind of out in the back of the way where people just don't understand how good the Object 268 is. Yes, I'm a little bit biased. I've played a hell of a lot of games within the Object 268 purely because of the fact that this obviously gets 850 alpha. It reloads in about 16 seconds, roughly, um, probably lower when you're putting on uh, enhanced combat rations, when you've got rapid loading, when you've also got the advanced uh, loading as well as part of the equipment and obviously... Uh, your crew skills so it's always really really important that you do have those on and that's why you're able to kind of uh, have your reload down to something like 10 seconds like you see in within this replay and of course when you're dealing 850 damage every roughly 11 seconds or something like that that you can see here you're going to be job as a good one and you're going to be able to perform very nicely and the reason why I'm calling this tank the surgeon or at least the butcher is mainly because <laughs> this tank is really really accurate for a tank destroyer that is able to do 850 alpha you know typically the more alpha you get the kind of worst performance of the gun statistics that you have within world of tanks now that is not the case with this vehicle now unfortunately as always i'm getting internet issues but that doesn't actually continue within these couple of games that we're going to be showcasing we've got two replays for you to have a look at in this uh, kind of video that we've got going on you can see here the Maltian coming out into the open had no idea what he was actually doing to be honest with you uh, going out into the open with a massive tank and not even trying to go behind the ridge line where you can get some protection on that side either way doesn't matter to us it means the Maltian is out of the game and he's not going to be a threat to us now you see me sitting in a very vicarious position that you probably shouldn't be sitting in if you are trying to kind of um, move yourself <laughs> into uh, the best of winning because you can get caught out really easily uh, I'm playing a bit ballsy within this game uh, and of course this is the sort of thing that you definitely don't want to happen is get spotted in this position because yes I've just received a hit right there but that could have been a hell of a lot worse if it had been an FE 4005 or a tank destroyer we could have lost over half of our health so although I only took 300 or 400 damage roughly we could have taken 1400 we could have taken 1700 um albeit that the armor of the 268 does lend itself to being able to pull off some pretty good bounces and it's not necessarily reliable all of the time because if someone aims at the 268 you do have some pretty bad weak points and as soon as you start kind of um angling and doing that sort of thing you end up not being able to really do anything um so yeah you do have to be careful with the armor model of the 268 but you know here you can see we only managed um, to block around and we actually hit the FV215B I kind of felt bad after hitting that since he was probably fully aimed and I just swung around and hit him with um, <laughs> with 850 alpha and he didn't get anything um, yeah either way we're not going to complain all too much because we are on two and a half thousand damage within this replay it does not stop here and um, as we're going through this replay I want to showcase that World of Tanks doesn't always have to be you playing the most OP tank or playing the most competitive competitive tank or playing a tank that everybody plays because it is in quotation marks the best tank in the game because you can make most tanks in the game work now I, I know world of tanks balance is not necessarily something that everybody sees um but yeah you can definitely make most tanks work and that's what we're seeing here unfortunately don't manage to pen the t125 should have just loaded the heat rounds one thing that i have got in the 268 to make this work even better is the fact that we can swap between rounds without costing any reload because i've put the equipment that allows you to do that and so it's really, really important that you load in some HE rounds with this vehicle because if you come up against any lightly armoured mediums or even light tanks, obviously, then you're able to deal quite a substantial amount of damage, 1,150 uh, damage per shell. It might even be 1,250 even, um, thinking about it. But regardless of how much it actually is, it's a lot more than what you standard doing and because you've got 90 millimeters of penetration there or thereabouts i think it's like 86 um to be exactly precise um but that allows you to go through a lot of vehicles and even in the side armor even at the rear of a lot of the heavy tanks in the game you are able to penetrate them which means if you do get into the chances which happen quite often where you can kind of flank around someone or you catch someone off guard where you're behind them you can very simply swap between 
doing your AP round or your heat round directly to your HE, getting it, getting it yourself an extra like 300 or 400 damage for literally doing absolutely nothing uh, different. And of course, even if you don't penetrate because it's HE, you can still get damage. And that's something I always utilize in the Object 268 if I genuinely have no chance of penetrating. And given the fact that the heat rounds on this thing are insane, and if you can't penetrate, you're probably looking at a piece of armor that is disgustingly uh, OP, like the IS-7 turret or something like that. And even then, an IS-7 turret can be penned by the Object 268 through the cheeks of the turret. Not that there are kind of pronounced cheeks, but the less uh, angled part of the turret of the IS-7 can still be penned by the 268's heat rounds, because I believe they're like 380 mil of pen, which is unbelievable. Um, and yeah, it's more than enough to go through pretty much every tank you come up against in the game and in fact sometimes it's actually better to load the AP rounds at a lot of vehicles especially if you're coming up against the side armor because you end up finding that although the heat rounds have more penetration you end up like bouncing off of spaced armor and that sort of thing you can see me here just trying to go for that engine deck of the t124 because we couldn't quite get any good shot onto the hull armor of the t124 uh, should have probably just loaded heat and gone straight through the front of the turret or the side of the turret or whatever was actually exposed there my bad and that's where we could have got an extra 850 damage no worries though, because we have picked up three and a half thousand damage and also uh, 1380 assistance damage, which is always really nice as well. So we're waiting here. We're obviously going for the T124. We don't actually manage to uh, hit him there. I was expecting maybe we'd get a shot blind into him, but it's not the case. Nonetheless, we can now go after this T125, who's kind of progressing behind us. He is only on 214 hit points, and this is where the HE rounds can come in really, really clutch because we can, as long as we hit the T124, we're going to be able to pen him or do enough damage to take him out of the game. So I don't even have to really aim in this. I can just go up. I would have penned with AP, but we're going to save the rounds because you never know in World of Tanks whether or not you're going to need those rounds later on. It's not like a lot of the vehicles though in the game. So uh, with regards to limited ammo count, so you don't have to worry as much as something like, uh, I don't know, like a Fosh or something. If you're just spamming out rounds left, right and center, uh, you don't tend to typically run out of rounds in the 268. So there's no real uh, worry there. But you definitely want to make sure that what you are doing is uh, just conserving the right kind of rounds in your vehicle so you're not running out of specific ones. Now I take a lot of HE because I've had a lot of games where I'm just experimenting or at least just trying to have a bit of fun using only uh, the HE rounds in the game which is something I wouldn't necessarily recommend if you're trying to do the best. If you're trying to free mark the tank that's not something you should do. You should definitely carry about three rounds of HE in the tank or maybe four um, and that way you know when the situation arise that maybe you get behind someone or maybe you're coming up against those light tanks you can finish them off really easily now we are now progressing towards whatever's left the cap circle is of the most importance because we don't want to lose to cap even though we definitely should be winning this game and it's getting ever so close now we don't have to worry because we actually stumble across the uh, t-34 who we place a nice round on the move probably shouldn't have fired on the move there because we could have missed potentially but very much uh, doubt it but nonetheless we finish off the t-34 uh, and he's now out of the game the leopard one obviously trying to move up and trying to do some damage to us i'm thinking he 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 unfortunately he is now in the range of just being able to one shot him with the heat round so we'll just do exactly that and we finish him off for the final uh, damaging hit in the game and of course uh, picking up a nice damage result as well uh, whether or not we come top within this replay well you're about to find out victory of course um yes we do come top uh, five enemies destroyed 5849 damage 1553 xp and one of the biggest things this kind of week or at least in the next few weeks, is the fact that there is a tier 8 to tier 10 double silver event going on right now, so you can harness that yourself. Of course, if we were using times 2 silver boost, we would have been able to make nearly 400,000 silver within this game. Obviously, um, this reduces uh, due to the cost of the consumables. They don't double. 
So although it says we made 158,000 silver, actually you made probably like 20,000, 200,000 silver. So double that um, and actually you probably end up with what an extra 200,000 on top of that. So like 360,000. But, you know, that's just something to note if you guys are wondering how come when I put a times two, I'm ending up with more than just double what the silver value would have been if I hadn't. It's because obviously the expenses of your vehicle get taken off. I'm not going to bore you anymore with that. Of course, we picked up nearly, well, 7.4 thousand combined damage in that replay uh, and showcase why the 268 should not be forgotten about and why you should probably give this tank a go, especially considering it's on the premium bonus right now. The next replay is far quicker and there's probably a reason to that because we managed to just rack up a lot of damage super quickly um, but it showcases a bit more of an open map or one that you can kind of do a little bit more than um, the previous and so yeah offers a little bit of extra stuff that you can do now what we're going to see in this replay is um, both aggression but also being a little bit passive at the same time now both of these players in the E5 seem to have two and three marks as we went past so that's always nice to see obviously the more people with uh, more marks typically you're going to increase your chances of winning so I'm thinking now I really need to step up my game and try and get there first before they steal all of the damage so at the beginning of this game we kind of set up in this sort of position I'm just wondering where my team are going to go where the enemy team are kind of the or at least the bulk of the enemy team are going to go that's what you should always do in world of tanks if you're wondering how come I keep like going in the wrong direction getting taken out super easily and people just seem to obliterate me within the first like three minutes of the game often a lot of those games are typically because you went in the wrong position uh, as a starter or maybe you uh, went in the right position for your tank but actually in the wrong position in the specific game that you're playing because uh, it ended up that a lot of the enemy team all went the same way that you went and none of your team went in the same way so just a lemming train uh, and that typically happens all of the time in World of Tanks so I'm not surprised that that, that happens so much um, but yeah but now we're trying to go for the chieftain's turret but of course it uh, wouldn't be like the uh, premium chieftain to be pretty disgusting to try and take out uh, using the turret uh, can usually pen that actually if he was looking flat at us we can pen the kind of flatter section of the valor or the t95 chieftain uh, so we could have dealt with him but nonetheless now we can kind of progress towards them the game is already looking like it's a it's a big one-sided uh, affair and you can see 12 to 9 the our team are just crushing through that right hand side on the flank I'm not surprised with the two t 110 in the platoon together just probably coordinating and doing all of that jazz we're coming now up on the auto loading tier 9 from the Swedish line the Emil 2 which should not be discounted that tank is really really good um, for its tier and of course um, for being able to have the high alpha that it does I always love autoloaders that have high alpha because you know it's so much easier to carry when you do have the alpha damage and you can kind of uh, put your middle finger up to people who decide I'm just going to YOLO for some reason going straight through the middle of the map regardless of how much hit points they have etc um, so there's always that and that's why I, I really do enjoy doing that sort of thing Obviously, in your own gameplays and you're playing tanks like the Object 268, maybe you're not specifically playing the 268, but maybe you're playing tank destroyers similar to this, then you're going to be wanting to play a little bit kind of um, more passively to the point where, you know, you do have to think a little bit. And you can see here we're going for the Super Conqueror. The one key thing about the 268 that you just witnessed there is that if you were going down a slope, the armor model of the tank becomes amazing. If people are shooting up to towards your tank and then you're kind of cresting the ridge it's really really good um, because effectively what you're doing there is increasing the uh, angle of your armor and so I often bounce a ton of rounds from just doing that and also with the 268 if you're thinking about trying to kind of uh, counter taking some rounds then you can do a little kind of wiggle wiggle um, left to right to just try and uh, put someone off because as soon as they start aiming towards the side that is kind of less exposed to them or at least flatter to where they're facing they aim at that and then you suddenly just twist and then you end up they looking at the kind of less angled area we're going after this chieftain here i probably should aim but i'm so lazy at the minute on motor tanks i don't really know why um, because that could have 
came off <laughs> catastrophically but luckily it doesn't you know we still pen him I'm fairly reliable I've done it so many times now in the 268 that I don't really worry all too much anyway um, but yeah it's uh, <laughs> probably if you're trying to consistently do it or if you're going for marks obviously we've got the three marks in this thing so I'm not really worried at all um, but yeah um, one thing that you can also note is that the speed of the vehicle because we haven't talked about that so far and this tank is actually super fast considering it's a uh, tank destroyer and you wouldn't have necessarily thought it was that fast now um, top speed limit I think is about like 40 roughly off the top of my head um, but yeah it definitely keeps up to that especially um, if you can get up that speed in the first place um, but yeah overall really really fun tank to play we spot the object 261 which is nice and yes the bane of my existence a lovely two marked object 261 decides to shut us down which was a little bit disappointing but i can't complain all too much you know it's probably funny anyway to see me get dirt by artillery i've done it to a lot of people playing in the t92 so yeah sometimes i do deserve to be one shot or at least like 60 percent of my hit points gone by artillery um but there you go Another replay, 4,200 damage done, another 800 assistance, and hopefully that has showcased a tank that I feel doesn't get enough credit and is really, really precise, really accurate, is just a bit of a surgeon, a bit of a worker, one of the ones that just gets stuck in, uh, and especially if you uh, play it in the right kind of role where you're not super aggressive, but you do play somewhat aggressive to get in there consistently you deal your 850 damage and you can go home with great results going up to like 10,000 damage I think I have got a result on this channel showcasing a 10,000 damage game a one versus four I believe um, so you can have a look at that I may link it but it's in the gameplay and tank reviews playlist under the object 268 so you can have a look at that other than that I hope you have a fantastic rest of the day and don't forget to check out the giveaway that's currently going on um, on the previous uh, few videos so there'll be two videos behind this you can see the giveaway video so make sure that you jump into that and uh, get yourself involved other than that have a great rest of your day and i hope you join me in the next one goodbye